Enki at James Madison University. And this short video tutorial is going to show you how to set up multi-QC on a HiSat2 alignment output. Uh, so here we're looking at my discovery environment, my Cyverse discovery environment uh, uh, data store. And I have a folder here called HiSat alignments. And I'll go in here and this is just a demo alignment that I did with some human retina RNA-seq data. And I did two different versions using two different assemblies of the human genome. Um, so we'll go into this one, and you can see here that I have my logs folder and my output folder. If I click into my output folder, here is my BAM and BAI files. So what's important for running multi-QC on these outputs, so first of all, what multi-QC will do is it will aggregate all the information from the files from these different samples into one report, giving you a bunch of metrics. Most importantly, you'll get the metric to figure out what percentage of your reads actually align to the genome and which were not aligned. Um, so multi-QC, the input file for that is going to be a directory that has a bunch of information in it. And so what's important here, a common mistake is to use this output folder as the input for multi-QC. But in actuality, what you need is everything the logs folder, the output folder, as well as all this other ancillary stuff. So you need to go up a level, and we're just going to select this this folder that has all of those uh, files inside of it. So just to, I'll, I'll click in here one more time just so you can see what's in this. It's all of the HiSat2 output files. And um, so that file is called Top Level, which is probably not a great name for this demo, but that's something I'm actually using. So we'll just use that. So I'll go here to my apps. And up here in the search bar, I'll type in multi-QC. And I'll use this multi-QC 1.11, which I believe is the only one. And I'm going to rename this multi-QC HiSat2 demo. And uh, I'll just default to throwing this in my analysis folder. OK, and then here in the input section of MultiQC, you can see you have a lot of different options. And that's because MultiQC is a tool, uh, which we've already used previously. In a previous video, I talked about how to use MultiQC to aggregate fast QC results. You can see that MultiQC will do these aggregations of a lot of different types of analysis outputs. And if you go down here, you can see that one of these outputs is HiSat. Uh, as well as other uh, alignment tools. And you can keep scrolling down. There might be some other tools in here that are interesting to you. So MultiQC is a sort of a universally useful tool for aggregating data reports. Uh, so it is important that you, if we're going to uh, use HiSat outputs, we have to select uh, from this HiSat directory option. So we'll hit the Browse button over here. And this is where we're going to look for that top-level folder. Uh, so just remember that this top level folder, I'm going to click into it really quick just so I can show you, that contains all of our HiSat outputs. Uh, so we want that parent folder, not this output folder. So I'm going to go back a level. I'm going to select this entire folder as my input for multi-QC. And now we can see that that folder pops up. I'm going to hit Next, and I'm going to hit Next again, leaving everything in defaults, and I'll launch analysis. And that will start the process. Let me see if I can find um, a multi-QC report that's already finished running. Okay, so this is a job that I set up uh, a couple of days ago just to show you sort of cooking show style what the finished product will look like. So wherever you selected your output to show up, you should now have this. This is your multi-QC output. You'll have a logs folder, a multi-QC data folder, and the thing you really want, which is this multi-QC report in an HTML file. And if you click on that, it will pop open in a new tab. You may have to uh, configure your browser to allow tabs. And then we have a general statistics table and then this nice uh, uh, bar chart down below. And they're both essentially showing similar things. Uh, you have uh, all of your samples listed out and the percent of sequences that align successfully to your reference genome. Uh, the bar chart down below gives you a slightly more um, uh, in-depth view of that. It's giving you 
you can choose number of reads or percentages. So this is an interactive plot. So let's just do percentages first so we can kind of see where these, um, these numbers up top are coming from. So this first sample, it says 83.9% of the reads aligned. And if you look at that sample one on the bar chart, you have these different options uh, that are telling you um, which of the reads aligned. Uh, and since this is paired end data, you could have uh, one read that mapped but the other didn't, both reads mapping or neither. And I believe what this graph is showing is just, uh, well, the, the blues and oranges are showing things that either are totally aligned or aligned somewhat. And the red is showing you reads that did not align. And if you, that's, that's the number that matches up with the, this percent align. So uh, you could see that this is 83%, 83.9% of reads aligned to some extent. And the other uh, sort of 16.1% of reads did not align. So that is how you set up and uh, look at your multi QC output for the high side tool.